Sound coming up in Julian at 743. The Regional Task Force on the Homeless will now have two boards to better tackle homelessness in San Diego. Here with more on those changes is the organization's CEO, Tamara Kohler. Hey, Tamara, how you doing? Good. Good morning and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you for saying so. Uh, let's quickly review uh, what what these changes as it relates to the board mean to the everyday Joe and to the everyday homeless person. You know, that's a really good question. Uh, we about three and a half, almost four years ago, put together this structure of a small nonprofit board, which was the regional task force, and the larger 31 member continuum of care board. That was done very intentionally to bring the work close together and create an organization under a nonprofit that could really lead in this space. A lot has happened during that time, and we have gone through a lot of evolution and a lot of growth. Some of that being bringing additional funding directly to the community through state funds. We got about $18.8 .8 million that came through a state fund directly to our organization. As we become a direct funder, we also have had to really look at our structure to strengthen and create the synergy that needs to be there. And as a nonprofit, the 31 member board really is a policy, a think tank group elected officials and service providers and those with lived experience on the board. And what we found is we needed to, to take that structure and now create another two board structure with a nonprofit small board made up by members of our original board. And as the CEO, I am now the CEO of the regional task force as a nonprofit with a smaller functioning fiscally strong, focused on bringing uh, resources to the community board and then a, a, of about 13 members. And then our 31 member board is now our advisory board and I am still the CEO of that advisory board. So it gives us the best of both. We have the strength now of two very intentional boards to move the work forward. One takes care of the nonprofit business. Think of it as the operational role in management. The other one is policy, it is practice. It is where we have those really good discussions and it's where we set course on priorities and how we'll address homelessness across the region. So division of labor, basically, putting everybody in their best spot. And fiscal responsibility, right? These are right. state, so they're the people's dollars. We needed a team that is focused on us being really intentional and zero conflict of interest, whether perceived or real, we needed this, this division of labor. Very good. So one of the uh, t subjects at hand is this point in time count. Can you explain what that is? So the point in time count is a required one night census of our homeless population across our entire county. So we have in the past used over 1600 volunteers, gone out, canvassed the entire county very intentionally to engage everyone who may not have a place to sleep that night in cars, on park benches, on sidewalks, anywhere that we would engage them. Unfortunately, we are now in a space where that is just not safe and it's just not appropriate with the community spread and with COVID-19. Uh, so you may have heard, uh, we made a petition to HUD who requires this count. They require it every other year. San Diego has been really intentional and done it every year. But along with the other 13 continuums of care from LA to Imperial County, we have all asked for an exception from HUD because of safety concerns, because of the need of volunteers to forego that unsheltered portion of this census. We have other ways to get good information, but we are not going to conduct the unsheltered census this year. It's just not safe or appropriate. Not only for those who are experiencing homelessness, we have to be very close to ask those questions, keeping them safe. They're not interacting with anyone that they don't already know. So their outreach teams and then our volunteers are not interacting with each other or with another population. So following public health guidance with the support of our board, especially those with lived experience and with our public health, our county and our cities and our partners from LA to Imperial County, we are not going to conduct that part of the count. So in, in, I, I'm asking you to look into, uh, to make a guess here, is that number going up or going down here in San Diego? You know, I think it's probably one of the most important things that I don't guess. 
um, we count and we count very intentionally. Uh, we have a lot of different shelter options right now under a pandemic, the convention center being one of those. We have some other hotel models across the region that have been popped up really in a pandemic. So we probably have more people sheltered, but it's very, very hard to determine what it would look like on that one night. That's why we count. So, and we, we're not gonna be able to make that count until the foreseeable future, right? Until yeah, you deem it yeah. safe? Yeah, it's a required time frame that they require it. That doesn't mean that when it is safe and appropriate that we may do a count that we won't turn into our federal partners, but to really let us understand what we're doing. We do have other ways to collect information. Our outreach teams are collecting information all the time. We do annual data. So last year we had over 35,000 individuals experiencing homelessness for different durations, and we have been collecting data on a daily basis. So we have other data sets to really help us understand what's going on. The point in time is one that the general public knows about, but we collect information every day. We report it annually, and we have other places to get good information to, to plan, to fund programs, and to really determine how well we're doing. All right. Well, we appreciate you making time for KUSI, and uh, we'll talk when that count eventually gets done, okay? Great. Thank you. All right, Tamara Cole,